I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis and today we're going to do a new review. We're going to do a review and overview and overlook of the new FR Sky. This is the XSR F40 and what it is, it's a combination F4 flight controller all in one built into an XSR receiver for your Tyrannus model radios. Uh, pretty cool because it does have standard mounting holes and dimensions on here by 36 by 36 and six millimeter in height, if you guys are wondering. And everything included is just six grams, so it's super lightweight. It does have 16 channels, eight channel RSSI by SBUS to UART1 of the F4, or you can do smart port of the XSR to UART6 of the F4. Now it does have pretty standard hardware on here, like I've seen on other flight controllers. We have that F4 on there, and that's a, a pretty standard one, STM32 F405 MCU. That is an SPI sensor with an MPU6000. It also has beta flight OSD built right into it, uh, which is also pretty standard these days. We're kind of expecting that. And it has a decent voltage range from 4 to 10 volts. So you're going to most likely power this off of 5 volt coming off your PDB. Uh, that would probably be the norm for this one. You're going to bring it right up to this port right here. Those two little tabs right there are going to be the wires coming up from your PDB to get power to this little guy. And we take a little closer look at this right there where it has that letter A. Just below that is a little slot right there for your micro SD card for your black box data to record down to. And if I flip this little guy over, you can see the antenna is coming off the bottom right here. If I hold it into the light just a little bit, notice how it shines. It does have some type of conformal coating over top of it, so it's fairly waterproofed. Uh, if you do make any connections on here, soldering stuff up, I would always just add a little more on there if you're trying to uh, get ready for the wet season. And also for guys that want to use it, it does have smart port telemetry on here. Now also included in the box, you get some rubber dampeners and some extra pins. These rubber dampeners are a little bit different than what I've seen before, but these go down through the holes and mount uh, just in between your mounting hardware and the flight controller itself. So it kind of gives some nice vibration isolation between your standoffs and your flight controller. Now we'll just go ahead and take a more in-depth look at what each of these do. Uh, we'll start out here with motor number one, which would be soldered right onto this one. Your signal wire from motor number one would be here. You also have ground wire support. So some people want that. It's nice they include that because I've seen some boards recently that don't have ground support anymore. It kind of seems to be going away. Now the next slot up, these two slots right here, those are for powering the board. So you're going to bring your wire up from your PDB and it asks for 5 volt on this one right here to power this board. So don't come straight up from uh, the full force of your 4S battery. You'll fry this board. The next one up there, that's going to be for ground and also for uh, motor number 6. If you decide to do that, you have a little M6 right there. If you decide to run six motors, you can do that. That's pretty cool. You can do a hex. Uh, up here, this is where motor number two is going to be. You have support for ground and for your signal wire right there. And then this little button right here, this is your XSR bind button. So you're going to push this down to bind up your button. And when you're good, you'll see a green light. Uh, if not, you'll see a blinking red light on there. And those LEDs are right next to the bind button right here, so you won't miss them. Now these next three over this direction over here, this is for your smart port telemetry. You have S right there, five volt and ground right there. And now jumping over here, we have support for motor number four. You have ground up top and signal wire right there. Now moving down to this next row right here, these top three right here, these are for your video out. So you have video out right there. V battery is gonna be your next one and then ground right there. So the next three on the very bottom, you have video in on the very bottom right here, five volt and grounds the next one up. And the very bottom row, the far left over here, this is where motor number three is gonna go. So you have support for ground wire right there. And the next one over, you'll have your motor wire number three signal wire right here. And the next one over is gonna be for your current V battery here and ground here. And the next two over are for your buzzer. So if you wanna add a buzzer on here, you do positive right here and negative right here. And of course you have your USB port right here for connecting to Betaflight. 
And if you're running any kind of support for a GPS, it's going to be right into those four slots right there for your S clock and all that good stuff. Now, if there's any confusion when you're soldering things up, what wire goes where as far as a positive or a negative wire, if you look really closely, uh, you have round holes here, and those are usually going to be either a signal wire or your five volt uh, or whatever your red wire is going to be. The square holes right here, these square labels, those are going to be where your ground wires usually go. And the same thing over here, you can see these are square and these are round. Now it seems there might've been some confusion in another video I saw for this particular flight controller, uh, mixing up these two buttons right here. This button right here, as I was saying before, this is your bind button as seen in the schematic uh, for binding up your XSR. Now the button over here, this is the boot button for reflashing the firmware on here. And it also says to leave in the plastic SD card that they have in there. It's a little fake plastic SD card that uh, it's going to protect this and, and keep any moisture from getting up inside here. Uh, if you are trying to conformal coat this, keep that plastic card up inside there, unless you're going to put your own micro SD card in there, which I'm going to do. Now I did mention before that it does have GPS support over here on these ports right here. It also has a built-in barometer if you guys want to uh, set up some type of aircraft with GPS support. Uh, so that means you could probably set this up on a flying wing if you wanted to do some type of iNav setup on here as well, which would be kind of sweet. But it does support a variety of FR Sky radios, including the Tyrannus X9D, which is one of my favorites. Uh, also the X9D+, Plus, the X9E, the Horus X12S, and the XJT in D16 mode. Uh, it also supports the new Tyrannus X7, which is also one of my faves. But as always, guys, if you're going to mount any type of F4 flight controller, use the grommets, the rubber grommets, the dampeners that came with it to uh, isolate some of the vibrations coming from your airframe to your flight controller's processor. Uh, very, very sensitive, the F4s. So make sure you do that. Also, guys, I'll try to put a direct link down below for this one and some type of coupon if you want to use it. And I'll also put a link down there for a recommended PDB to use for this one. So I think it's going to be a pretty sweet show short stack and uh, one less thing hanging out off the top of your quad so you can bring these wires up and put the traditional zip ties on there with some heat shrink and you should be good to go so thanks again for hanging out checking out the fr sky new xsr f40